I'm here at Peaches, which is a fried chicken sandwich spot in Brooklyn. They have a couple of different sandwiches, different levels of spice. I'm not that great with spicy foods, but hopefully I'll be okay. Let's see. The regular was fine. I feel like I could eat the whole thing of that. The middle one was probably at my edge. This one, I don't even know. Oh my God. <coughs> so why is my brain telling me that my mouth is on fire? Well, my producers fared better than me. This is enjoyable still for me. And what can I do to ease the pain? To answer those questions, we're gonna have to brush up on some chemistry and dig into some neuroscience. Don't touch your eyes, don't touch your mm -hmm. eyes. So the burning sensation, watery eyes, coughing and sweating that we survived back at the restaurant has to do with this chemical compound. C18H27NO3, or capsaicin. It's the active component of many chili peppers and an irritant for animals like us. To learn more about how it interacts with our nervous system, I called up neuroscientist Federica Genovese. She told me that your lips, tongue, throat, and even your nose and eyes have nerve endings that contain special proteins called receptors to detect pain. Once capsaicin binds to it, it opens up and works like a switch. When it binds to them, it turns them on and generates a tiny electrical current, the building block of the brain's language. That electrical signal is what gets translated into that burning sensation I felt while eating hot chicken sandwiches. The amount of capsaicin a chili pepper has affects the intensity of that signal, which is where the Scoville heat scale comes into play. It goes from zero heat units or no spice, like with a bell pepper, all the way up to 16 million for pure capsaicin extract, with jalapenos, cayenne, and ghost pepper in between. This is the extra hot rub that they put on the sandwich, so let's see how I do with this. That ghost pepper at the one million heat unit mark felt like fire <laughs> on my tongue. And for my brain, oh my God, it kind of was. The receptors that bind capsaicin also respond to things that might burn you, like a hot cup of coffee. Ever wondered why we refer to spicy foods as hot? My face feels really, really, really hot. This is why. Oh, oh my God. The nervous system is using the same danger information highway for multiple threats, whether they're thermal or in the case of capsaicin, chemical. Once these receptors are activated, the electrical signal that's generated travels through the trigeminal nerve up to the brain, specifically to the sensory cortex, which processes information about spiciness. That is really, really painful. The signals also get shuttled to the limbic system, which processes information about rewards and threats. As part of that threat and pain processing, these signals end up in the hypothalamus, which is part of the limbic system. The hypothalamus turns on the adrenal glands, which release adrenaline and control our fight or flight response. So when we eat spicy foods, we get a small adrenaline rush. Some people really like going on a roller coaster and have this rush. Some other people really like to have the rush from spicy food. And as with riding roller coasters, it gets easier with experience. The more you eat spicy foods, the less you'll feel it because your receptors become less sensitive. Federica also told me that the more you eat them, the more pleasant experiences you might associate with spicy foods, which could also affect your perception. You have the association of this pleasuring sensation of the spicy food associated with whatever you are eating that increases your experience in general. But even if you love turning up the heat, too much could be dangerous. <laughs> so don't overdo it. You might activate protective reflexes like sneezing, coughing, sweating, gagging, vomiting, or worse. I once mistook a pepper for a sun-dried tomato and it didn't end well. That's because those capsaicin binding receptors are almost everywhere, including all the passage and the exit of the food. So Basically, the body sees too much capsaicin as a toxin it needs to get rid of. Too much could even send you to the hospital. Plants develop capsaicin within their seeds as a mechanism of defense so that animals will not eat their fruits. So if it's too spicy, milk can help ease the immediate pain. Whole milk works really well. The reason boils down to the chemistry of capsaicin. The molecule, especially this part right here, is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't dissolve well in water. That's why drinking water won't help much. It'll just slosh the capsaicin around. But milk and other dairy products like cottage cheese and ice cream are rich in a protein called casein, which is better at dissolving capsaicin, keeping it away from your pain receptors. That's why many spicy dishes often have a fatty component, like coconut milk or heavy cream. You know, without a scientific knowledge, we already included um, the remedy for spiciness within most of the spicy dishes. But if you're thinking of reaching for some refreshing beer to wash down the spice, 
Don't do that. <laughs> I think beer is not a good idea because it has carbonation and alcohol. Both of them are irritants, so they both are going to activate the pain system at the same time. So next time you eat spicy food, remember to use science to your advantage. And just in case, keep some milk or ice cream on hand to help you ease the pain. Milk, milk right now. <laughs>